date was November 23rd. And this would prove to be the most talked about and rerun single play in the history of college football. The magic of Doug Flutie was just one wave in an ocean of events that shaped the image of college football 1984. Events that thrilled the fans and confused the experts with upsets and surprises. No team was beyond reach. No power immune from attack. During the season, six different teams climbed to number one, none holding it more than a few weeks. On one single Saturday in November, five of the top ten teams were beaten. It was unprecedented and unpredictable. It was college football 1984. It was a most unusual year. College Football Review 1984, brought to you by the Navy, where you get a chance to learn highly technical skills from people who know them best, with opportunities to advance in today's hot fields. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. Order call, on call. Let go of the anchor. Liberty call now, Liberty call. Most jobs promise you the world. The Navy delivers. See your recruiter a call this number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. This is what you work for all this time. Oh, yeah. Get out there him on offense. Make sure it's a complete ball game today. A complete ball game from the very first whistle. Offense, defense, the kicking game. Let's go like a bunch of crazy men and play some games. Oh, yeah. Hold on. 1984 began with defending national champion Miami, an underdog to the preseason pick for number one, Auburn. But when the old number one beat the new number one, the stage was set for a most unusual season. Awesome as ever, mighty Nebraska advanced to the top, only to be stung by unranked Syracuse in the upset of the year. With more and more winning teams, many traditional powers fell hard from their lofty rankings. The Panthers of Pittsburgh, annual guests in the top ten, lost as many regular season games in 1984 as they did in the previous five years put together. The team the Bear made invincible, Alabama, had not suffered a losing season in 26 years until 1984. Bo Schembechler never lost four games in one season at Michigan until 1984. For 14 consecutive years, Penn State gained a berth in a bowl game until 1984. And this same confusing, unusual year found Notre Dame still searching for a bridge over troubled waters. Only late season upsets at LSU and in the mud at Southern California gave the Irish, at best, a mediocre season. So thorough was the change in power structure that not one of the last eight collegiate national champions would finish 1984 ranked in the top 15. As the once unbeatable became human, new teams rose from near obscurity to take their place. 
Oklahoma State climbed into the elite of the Big Eight, challenging Oklahoma and Nebraska. The Cowboys won 10 games for the first time ever, including a come-from-behind triumph in the Gator Bowl. Texas Christian showed the most dramatic turnaround in college football. After winning but one game in 1983, the Frogs unleashed a junior roadrunner named Kenneth Davis. He turned every play into an adventure. They won eight games, set 38 school records, and finished their best season in 25 years. Second-year coach Joe Morrison rebuilt South Carolina into a top-ten team, giving the Gamecocks the winningest season in school history. But maybe the biggest success story was at Army, where coach Jim Young daringly switched to the wishbone offense. The cadets responded by leading all of college football in rushing and won the first bowl game in West Point history. Jim Young had restructured Army into one of football's big winners. To take a team from the bottom to the top, coaches must find not only players who can put points on the board, but those who can keep points off the board. Flashy offense may win the battles, but as most coaches know, punishing defense wins the war. To the world. Birds away. The Navy delivers. See your recruiter or call this number. Navy. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. The off times crazy sport of college football was jolted by the unexpected in 1984. There was, for example, the pass reception off a defender's posterior. 15-yard penalty assessed a covered wagon for entering the playing field. A center snap through the goalposts for two points instead of three. A new version of the onsides kick. And an Indian who could bury a flaming spear but had trouble mounting his steed. Unusual and bizarre decisions held a major influence on college football 1984. When three points would have been sufficient to clinch major bowl berths, two coaches, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, 
and Pat Dye of Auburn decided against what appeared to be easy field goals to try for touchdowns. On a mix-up in the backfield, Auburn was stopped by Alabama and kept out of the Sugar Bowl. Likewise, from the one, Nebraska was stopped by Oklahoma and kept out of the Orange Bowl. Said both coaches about the decisions, if we can't gain a yard on a single play, we don't deserve to win. In the Oklahoma-Texas game, it was an official's decision that sparked controversy. The official ruled this Oklahoma defender out of bounds as he caught the ball. No interception. The decision, which officials later admitted was incorrect, allowed Texas to tie Oklahoma on the very next play. dramatic decision by Maryland coach Bobby Ross to switch quarterbacks resulted in the biggest comeback in college football history. Trailing Miami 31-0 at the half, Ross inserted Frank Reich at quarterback. The Terps scored an incredible 42 second half points to win a game that will be long celebrated at Maryland and forgotten at Miami. But in this year of the unusual, maybe the most unbelievable event of all also took place in South Florida. It will forever be known as the play. After Boston College and Miami had scored 11 touchdowns, after one of the most awesome passing assaults ever witnessed, this game of the year narrowed down to six seconds of magic in the hands of receiver Gerard Phelan and passer Doug Flutie. We've got to get the ball near midfield and then take a shot at the end zone. Put three receivers on one side, just send them down. I scramble around a little bit to buy time, let them get down there. I just threw it towards Gerard and he, he made a great catch. I was just staring at the football and just hoping that it would come my way. And, uh... It finally came down and was up there for a long, long time, and, uh, you know, I cradled it in. And maybe uh, after a day or so, I realized what actually happened, but right now, I'm just in a state of euphoria. That never-to-be-forgotten victory, plus a Cotton Bowl win, made Boston College one of the top teams in college football, as were the Nebraska Cornhuskers. With the Sugar Bowl triumph over LSU, Nebraska became the only team in college football to finish in the top 10 every year since 1970. Climbing to the top of that coveted 10 means number one. At season's end, there were three serious contenders for number one. Florida fans had reason to stand and cheer in 1984 as the Gators won their first ever Southeastern Conference Championship. Under new head coach Galen Hall, they did it by beating Auburn and Georgia back to back with a not so secret weapon known as the big play. Quarterback Kerwin Bell takes. Bell gives off to Anderson, up the middle of the 35, the 30, Anderson the 20, Anderson the 5, touchdown, Neil Anderson and the Florida Gators have taken the lead. Kerwin Bell drops back to throw from his own end zone, he's going deep down the left sideline, he's got his man, he catches the ball at the 45, to the 30 yard line of Georgia, to the 20, to the 10, touchdown, Ricky the Teal. Saddled with only a single loss, Florida was selected number one by the New York Times and the Sporting News. Like Florida, the Washington Huskies had but one strike against them and continued their record of finishing first or second in the Pac-10 for the past eight years. The Huskies, a superbly balanced team, were dominant enough to end Oklahoma's dreams of a national championship in the Orange Bowl. The 
question was, should the single losses of Florida and Washington against a heavyweight schedule carry more clout in the final polls than the undefeated record of Brigham Young against what many considered a lightweight schedule? Not one of BYU's 13 victories was over a team that finished in the top 20. The Cougars of Lavelle Edwards did tear up the teams they faced, leading the nation in passing and total offense. College football's winningest team of the past five years entered the Holiday Bowl, needing an impressive win over Michigan to be number one. the season. BYU took the overhead route to a 24-17 victory, finished the season undefeated, and became the first team in history to win the national championship by using more pass plays than running plays. If there was still some doubt over who should be number one, Lavelle Edwards answered the question this way. We deserve what we got because we beat everybody we played and nobody else could say that. Flight operations, Hawaiian Island. Most jobs promise you the world. The Navy delivers. See your recruiter or call this number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. remembered for great teams, others for brilliant coaches, but 1984 more than ever belonged to the players. Individual effort rising to meet a Saturday challenge, young men burning with a deep desire to be number one. Whether on offense or defense, these young players were the true headline makers of a most unusual season. If the quarterback drops back seven yards and, and, and you can beat your man by one step, he's yours. Nobody feasted on quarterbacks like Bruce Smith, college football's top defensive player of 1984. At Washington State, junior Reuben Mays gained 357 yards on a single Saturday, the most ever by one runner in one game. Iowa's Chuck Long completed an incredible 22 consecutive passes in one game, also an NCAA record. At UCLA, John Lee connected on more field goals than any kicker in collegiate history, including three game winners in the final minute of play. Illinois junior David Williams became only the second receiver in college football history to catch over 100 passes in a season. It has been said of Ohio State's raging bull, Keith Byers, if there's a hole, he hits it. If there's not, he makes it. Thundering through enemy defenses, Byers became only the 11th player ever to lead college football in rushing, scoring, and all-purpose running all in one season. A rare triple crown which made Keith Byers the game's most feared runner.
As exciting as the ball carriers and receivers were, 1984 quite simply was dominated by quarterbacks. At Miami, all eyes focused on sophomore passer, Bernie Kosar. Tall, mobile, with a slingshot for an arm, Kozar set 20 Miami passing records in only two years. His touchdown pass with 12 seconds to play handed arch rival Florida its only loss of the 1984 season. But this year would prove to be his last as Bernie Kosar decided to take his enormous skills into professional football two years ahead of schedule. His coach says, passing is college football's big equalizer. He is Robbie Bosco of BYU, the latest golden arm in a quarterback factory that has won college football's passing title seven of the past nine years. Only a junior, Mosco is the first quarterback ever to pass for over 200 yards in all 12 games of the regular season. His skills took second place to his heart in BYU's most important game ever. After being carried off the field, unable to walk, he returned to the Holiday Bowl struggle with Michigan. And hobbling on a heavily taped knee, Robbie Bosco fired the winning touchdown that clinched the national championship for Brigham Young. But the most unusual player of a most unusual season was a 5'9 quarterback who made the impossible possible. Doug Flutie completed more passes for more yards in his career than any other quarterback in 116 years of college football. He was the most exciting player in decades. A Rocky in shoulder pads who epitomized what we all admire in our heroes. The ability to make something happen. Now at all times you're trying to prove to the other team that you're better. And when you're down by 10 points or whatever the score is, it's time to dig a little deeper, and they know for a fact that we're going to do it eventually. It's just a matter of when. the grand finale, 1984 proved to be a most unusual year. Football Review 1984 was brought to you by the Navy. A chance to discover how good you can be and how far you can go. Most jobs promise you the world. The Navy delivers. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. <laughs>